Hey guys, CompSciGirl523 here, and we're back today with another tutorial. First things first, quick update as usual. I am still working on my most recent map. I am in the process of programming it. It's just taking a while. Also, I haven't been streaming me programming it because my internet's kind of funky right now. I'm working on figuring out how to sort that out. Um, so instead, at the end of this video, I will give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of the map. And yeah, so stay tuned for that at the end of the video. Now, for this video, <laughs> we are going to discuss puzzle making. So I'm going to kind of just go over the basics of puzzle making. So there's kind of like four things I'll talk about. I'll talk about the types of puzzles, uh, theming puzzles, difficulty level of puzzles, and most importantly, the execute command, which is used very commonly in puzzle making. There's also a few other commands I'll discuss when I get to them. Uh, and yeah, so I guess we will start with the types of puzzles. All right, so let's start with types. So I kind of split up puzzles into three different types. I consider them either they're a parkour puzzle, which is the jumping puzzles, uh, mechanical puzzles, which involve pistons, repeaters, and comparators, and code-based or command-based puzzles. For parkour, you do need to know the parkour rules. Uh, for example, the longest jump you can do unassisted with like jump boost or anything is a four block jump straight across or a uh, three block jump going one up, stuff like that. For mechanical puzzles, you need to know the rules about pistons, repeaters, comparators, like the delays on repeaters. Uh, different blocks have different things for comparators, etc., etc. And then, of course, code base, you need to know the commands for it. Uh, for this one, I'll do a separate video that will go over kind of like basic like redstone mechanics. But uh, just keep that in mind when you do puzzles that sometimes you're doing a mechanical puzzle, you have to look up those kind of rules and stuff like that. And then, of course, there's a combination thereof. Sometimes you might want to have a parkour puzzle that has a mechanical part. Like you maybe need to extend a certain amount of pistons so you can jump to the next thing. Or maybe you need to trigger a button that makes blocks randomly appear or magically appear in front of the player to jump over and stuff like that. Now on to theming. So... When it comes to theming puzzles, I kind of look at what exactly is going on in the map. So what is the player trying to achieve? For example, since I do mystery maps most commonly, I have done other ones, but most commonly I do mystery maps, a lot of times you're trying to get information by either getting into a locked area or hacking a computer. So I try to think, okay, what can I do to sort of emulate as if the player was actually doing that task? So for like a lock pick. I have, like, usually you guys are solving some sort of maze or something. So it's, like, something logical. Like, I have to think through, okay, what's the best way to do this? Stuff like that. Uh, again, with hacking puzzles, it's similar. I try to do things that are kind of, like, logical-based, thinking, okay, how can I work my way through this to actually unlock information? Uh, stuff like that. So you have to kind of think, what do you want the player to try to achieve and try to theme the puzzle towards that? Uh, after that, you think, what does the puzzle look like? For example... If you're doing a medieval puzzle, well, like a medieval map and have like a medieval style theme, you're not going to have blocks that look very futuristic or computerized. You're not going to have any computer based puzzles, so you don't want to do anything that's sort of resembling hacking or stuff like that. Again, does it fit in with a story and map theme? So that's kind of how I come up with puzzle ideas. I kind of just try to theme them to what's going on in the maps. So now on to difficulty level. So there's kind of different parts of difficulty level. There is the coding aspect of difficulty level, which is how hard is it to actually create what I want to happen inside Minecraft. It has gotten a bit easier with um, 1.12 because you now have functions which allow you to run multiple commands all in one command block using the function because you can write separate files, which is very helpful instead of having to have blocks upon blocks upon blocks of chained command blocks. Uh, so it is a little bit easier now, but you still have to keep that in mind that sometimes things can get a little tricky. Also, keep in mind if there's any lag involved when there's, like, clocks and stuff running. Um, and then you have to look at the playing aspect of difficulty. So some puzzles can be, well, dangerous to the player. So you have to keep in mind if you need to use spawn points, or maybe a puzzle can't be completed without having some sort of effect on the player. Or maybe you want to use effects to, like, prevent a player from doing certain things inside of a puzzle. And then you also have to keep in mind requirements. For example, if a puzzle has to have a certain render distance in order for the player to complete it, you want to tell them this ahead of time, same with particles. So I mentioned kind of like three different commands there that you can use. So I mentioned spawn point, uh, effect, and particle. So spawn point 
this would be the entity, so the player, nearest player in this case, it can be all players, and XYZ is their coordinates, or you can use relative coordinates. I'll show you an example about how you can use uh, spawn point with the execute command to do that. Uh, you have effect, which affects players with different types of, uh, like, you can give them potion effects technically, or there's other effects you can give them, like nausea and stuff like that. So it'd be effect, and then this is the entity. Uh, the effect you want to do, you can look these up online, there's too many to list here. Uh, the number of seconds you want the effect to last, and it's amplifier, and if you want the particles hidden, you would type true, like that, otherwise you leave it blank, the particles will show. Um, and then if you want to show particles to give an effect to say, hey, go in this direction, or maybe just like a cool effect, for example, I used particles in... Um, a couple of my maps, whenever I do like the ciphers, you'll see I have like the enchantment table effect going on in the background that's using particle. Um, where it says explore here, this is where you would actually put the particle name. Again, you have to look it up online. Uh, there's too many to list here. And then you have XYZ, which is the coordinates from where it's originating. And then this would be XYZ, how far you want it to spread out in the X, Y, and Z direction. And then the speed you want the particles to spawn, and the number of particles you want to spawn. Uh, this can be kind of like a hit or miss when you're doing this. Kind of have to visually just play with it. Uh, try not to make these numbers too large, or you can lag out your computer and possibly crash your world. Just keep that in mind. And yeah, so last thing about difficulty level is maker versus player. Now, I'm guilty of this too. Because as a map maker, when I make a puzzle, I know how to solve the puzzle. Therefore, I am not the best judge of how easy or hard a puzzle actually is. So usually it's a good idea to try to have someone solve your puzzle other than yourself. Even if it's just basically maybe if it's like a logic puzzle, you can write it out on a piece of paper and even just have like a friend read through it or your parents read through it or cousin somebody read through it and see if it seems like too hard to figure out or maybe it's too easy to figure out. Also, it's a good idea to have someone test it just in case they can find exploits. By this, I mean any way that they can get around actually doing your puzzle. Um, I can give you an example of that with, uh, which one was it? Was it fine? I think it was, I believe it was fine line. I had the, um, not fine line. It was escaped. In escaped, I had the, like, match the picture puzzle, and I've written all the code for it, and one of my playtesters actually figured out a way to get around it, and he told me, so I was able to then go back and fix that problem. So keep in mind that when you're making your puzzles, you as the maker may find it very easy. A player may not find it as easy or may find it too easy, so definitely have someone look over um, your puzzle. All right, now to the execute command. So the great thing about the execute command is you can actually use it to detect where a player is located based on what they're standing on or based on something being near them. And you can trigger another command because of that. So for example, here I have execute entity, data tag, the at E, at P, at A, whatever. X, Y, Z could be either the tildes or actual coordinates and the command. Now I was talking about detecting things. Here's the one where you can detect. So you can do execute entity X, Y, Z, detect a certain block, block name, at these coordinates with whatever data tag it is. So if it's like wool and a certain color, whatever, uh, and then execute command based on that. Uh, now that I kind of briefly went over that, again, I'll have any, any of these... Um, commands, I'll put them in the first comment and I'll pin it to the top of the comments. Um, I can't put them actually in the description because there's restrictions on like certain characters and stuff, So, uh, but I will have them there. Uh, so now, now that I kind of briefly showed you these, I'll show you some examples and I'll actually show you the code. You kind of see I have some of the code down here, but I will show you the code as well in Minecraft. Alrighty, we're back to my lovely tutorial world here with puzzle making. Alrighty, so let's see what I want to start with. Um, let's start with spawn point. So here I have this emerald block, and I'm going to do this. So, give me one second, so you're going to see I'm going to do this. So this is the command I want to use, so this is the execute. It's detecting to see if a player is standing on top of the emerald block, and if they are, it will set their spawn point. To show that this is actually working, 
I'm going to do a really quick piece of code here. Oh, that's not enough space, that is. Always active. So this will only light up if I'm standing on there, and I'll show that it actually um, set my spawn points. So if I stand on here, I don't know if you can see. Oh, wait, probably not command block. I meant to do this. I am sorry. There we go. So actually you can see light up. Ta-da! So it actually did set my spawn point. My spawn point is now on this emerald block. So you can do that as a, as a general thing. So like if you have certain like checkpoints, you can use this kind of system to do a checkpoint system. Now you could also do it where you actually use um, coordinates. So in that case, I have it so I can actually see. Um, I have command block feedback set to true so I can see this. So if I type that in, that's my spawn point, and I'll show you. Let me just put this here. I go here. You look over here. These coordinates match this. So my spawn point has been set to the top of there. So that's kind of a helpful thing if you have, say, you have like very difficult parkour going on, and they get through like half of it, and you want to checkpoint them at some point, or maybe like a quarter of the way through, depending on how difficult it is. Um, you can use a system like this. All right, so next I'm going to do effects. So when it comes to effects, you can do quite a few interesting things. So for example, I'm going to show you, I can give myself like jump boost 10. So here's my jump boost, which is kind of cool. Now you can see it's lasting for 10 seconds. However, let's say I refresh it now. So it's going to give me 10 seconds again. But I don't, I did whatever I need to do and I wanted to clear it. You don't have to use actually milk. You can use this command, which is in here, which will clear effects. And it took all the effects from me and now I don't have jump boost. You can also combine that with a um, execute command, for example. You can do stuff like this. You see I turned the particles on for this one. You can see I was given jump boost 10 because I was standing on the emerald. Now if I get off, I'll count down, and this is the command I'm running. I'm running execute, test for the emerald block, and affect me with the jump boost. So you can see you can use that to have different effects occur based upon if a player is standing on a certain block and stuff like that. Also, you could have running effects. For example, if you wanted the player to not be able to move very fast through a puzzle, you wanted them to go slowly through a puzzle, uh, you can do things with command blocks such as this. For example, I have here effect slowness, one ex have it, um, want it going one second, but since it's every single tick, because it's a repeating command block, keeps going, and it's uh, slowness five, so it makes it really hard to move unless I jump around. So yeah, you can do stuff like that with effects, which will add to your puzzles. So for example, I use blindness in one puzzle to turn off the lights, so it was a puzzle where you had to turn the lights back on type of thing. You can do effects like that. Alrighty, another good use of the execute command is to allow you to play sounds near where a player is versus actually having to have coordinates because sometimes you want things to trigger based upon where a player is. So for example, I can have this type of command. So I have execute where I am based on me, play sound, and I have the bass drum sound, and I have it playing where I'm ever I'm located. Since I'm the one running the command, when you use X command, you're actually saying the player is running it versus the command block running it. So it knows to play it where I am. I have all these set up with different sounds. There's a lot of cool new sounds. In Minecraft now with 1.12. Alrighty. So now I'm going to show you particles. So I mentioned particles can be used to sort of mark where players are supposed to go and everything. So for example, like you want to tell them this is a spawn point block and you don't have this here. But you want to remind them, hey, you need, should really stand here. Uh, for example, I have a particle. There's a particle called Happy Villager. Uh, I want it to occur two blocks above where the command block is. Um, don't spread out in the XYZ direction. I want it to do a count of one and a speed of one. So I can go like this. And you see they appear. I could also change this so it's like count of ten. As you see, it becomes more clustered because there's like ten of them appearing at once. And you can use that to kind of mark things in your puzzles for your players. So I'm going to turn this off so this doesn't lag too much. One thing about particles, or oh, that works too. <laughs> One thing about particles is they can lag your computer sometimes, so it's good to always turn them off if they are not being used. Alrighty, so now I'm going to show you kind of a cool mechanic you can do with the execute command. So this is a mechanic that I created 
um, well, recreate it, technically speaking. Um, if you've ever seen any games like Capture the Point type of games, uh, where they have blocks that can change near the player. This is kind of my version of that. I had recreated um, a few of the mini games I've seen online just on my computer for myself because I was curious about how I could potentially do that. And so this is kind of part of the code for that. So basically the idea behind this is you have a pink and green team and they would try to capture points by standing on them. So uh, this is uses the scoreboard command. I'll do a separate video on the scoreboard command. Excuse me. Um, sorry if I sound kind of funny. My allergies have been horrible lately. So uh, this just adds me to the pink team. So I'm going to go to the pink team. And what's supposed to happen is I have command blocks running up here that are execute commands that will test for when any player is standing on wool and if they are, test to see if they are the pink team or the green team. Now if they are, they're going to start via a sort of small clock, not exactly a clock, but delayed reaction, change the blocks around them to their team's color. So if I were to go stand over here, you see the blocks around me turn pink. Now if I'm, now if I'm green team, Ta-da! Also, from a green team, I could take it back from the pink team. And if I am pink team, I could take it back from the green team. So it's kind of a cool way to be able to manip manipulate the world around your player to create some interesting puzzles. And yeah, so that's basically kind of like the basics of puzzle design. Again, keep in mind the type of puzzle you're trying to do, the theming of the puzzle, how difficult is the puzzle going to be, and try to use the execute command because it does some pretty cool stuff. Um, so, if you have any questions about anything I explained, or if you want to see a specifically how I programmed one of my puzzles, uh, let me know which puzzle you want to know in the comments below. Or if you have any questions about anything, let me know again in the comments below. So now, I guess, as I promised, I will show you a quick update of my current SI file. So give me one second to switch worlds. Alrighty, we're currently now inside my new map. I had to go turn the textures on, um, but now they're all situated. And yes, so first thing I'm going to show you is the code, how far I've gotten, and then I'll give you a sneak peek of how things look with the texture pack. I'm not going to show you everything, but I'll show you some stuff. So... So far, this is the code. <laughs> um, as you can see, it's kind of still in its early stages. However, um, uh, I am slowly chipping away at it. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer because I do have, um, I'm using the same mechanic. If you played the tester, I had a recall feature, so I'm trying to make sure I get that feature going in this map as well, uh, which is why it's taking a little bit longer because I have to add a few extra uh, command blocks for every single command block that I put down. Um, that's a long story, but yes, so that's in progress, and I can give you a sneak peek of, I guess, the front of the theater, so I'm gonna look away, I know where it is, look away, look away, look away, and slowly fall down, and dun dun dun, that's the front of the theater. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, the map is still in progress, I can see there's still some building that needs to be done, however, um... It is a work in progress, and I will keep you guys updated. Hopefully, I can get my internet fixed so it will quit dropping. It has something to do with my computer, so it's it's not actually, like, I don't know what's wrong with my computer, but I will figure it out. And, yeah. Oops, sorry, my mouse slipped. Alrighty. So, I guess that's all for now. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And I'll try to, my best to answer them. So, until next time.